Good afternoon all. Shall we open some post? Yeah, let's open some post. It's post bag. Let's start with this yellow one. It says on the other side LED module, but I don't think it is an LED module. No, it's not. It's a different kind of module. It is a module. I think that's all that's in there. I think I only ordered one. Yeah, let's have a closer look. Uh, yes, this is actually uh, quite big. I opened it, I took it out of the yellow envelope looking at my camera and then I suddenly looked at it in real life and it's absolutely enormous. So let's uh, get an idea of how big it is. So it's about 95 uh, millimeters long. So it's almost 10 centimeters in length. What about width? Uh, it's about 30 millimeters, three centimeters. So it's pretty big. Let's zoom in and see what components we've got. Right, there are a couple of D1804 transistors. Now, my guess is that those are MOSFETs, um, but I'm just going to look them up briefly because uh, I don't recognize the number, but pretty sure that's a MOSFET, and I'm pretty sure there'll be a voltage uh, detector I see on here somewhere. Oh, I perhaps should explain what this is. Um, it's a supercapacitor protection module, but it's designed for two supercapacitors. So I think what you do is you they're these cylindrical ones so i think you put one here and the other one there link them together at the other end and then run a wire from this midpoint which is called the 2.7 volt point although they've put the silk screen on back to front uh, run that to the other end of the supercapacitor so here you've got 0 volts and 5.4 volts let's just quickly check that d1804 uh no it's not a mosfet it's a 2sd1804 bipolar and we've got collector emitter 50 volts collector base 60 volts collector current 8 amps collector dissipation 20 watts so it's a high power uh, bipolar transistor now there's also an led here so they have actually integrated um, an led light onto this one there's one per channel um, which is nice to see um, what isn't nice to see and i'll just zoom in again um, is that all the little three pin devices have been scraped uh, probably with some sort of grinding device and just about make out some lettering on that uh, top one there but the other two have been well and truly scraped um, there's no way I can read the actual um, part numbers off of those no they've all been ground with a grinding wheel which is really irritating um, I mean if I plotted this or drew this out i might be able to work out whether perhaps it's the same circuit as i've seen on the the other one with bipolar transistors the one um the protection module for the 700 farad supercapacitors and whether there's actually a tl431 uh, voltage reference current shunt type device on here that's quite possible but they've certainly implemented let me just point at it um this transistor here switches on the base of the power transistor there and it also turns on that led so yes we would see when this circuit kicks in and if this led gradually fades up or whether it just switches on suddenly so um yeah interesting that's not a mosfet it's bipolar um the holes in this board are absolutely massive if i put that down over uh, a 10 millimeter or one centimeter square you can see that it's probably 12 millimeters in diameter so the the bolts and the threads on these three this is for 3000 farad supercapacitors i think um 3000 f is in the title of this device um yes they've got these very big um nut and bolt arrangements on the end so yes an oddity that i was um expecting that to be a, a more modern circuit which would switch in the protection suddenly not gradually there's no heat sinking either on those transistors is there because there's no um copper in this area uh, not nothing much here and nothing on the back either you can see light straight through here so there's no sort of thermal dissipation for these so um they're obviously not expecting many watts to be flowing through those right so this is the item and i was staring at that price thinking eleven dollars that's very expensive for one circuit board but there should be two because this says two pieces uh 5.4 volt 3000 farad supercapacitor protection board 
balance board and you saw me open it and there was only one in there so I'm gonna have to open a case um, for a partial refund now which is uh, slightly annoying but anyway um, you should get two pieces for eleven dollars and eleven cents that really is too expensive isn't it free shipping and I got this one from Zhan Yeji 2016 now I've just done a general eBay search for 3000 F and despite it saying select vehicle uh, most of the results here are for supercapacitors, so we got one piece um, of this same board um, for $5.66. Uh, but I wanted to show you the actual supercapacitors that are these 3000 Farad types. So we got this one, the TIG, 2.7 volt, $40. So I was tempted to um, get one of those. We've got some Ultra 2.7 volt, 3000 Farad. Um, yeah, they say Mtron on them, and it says here pre-owned, $60 for one of these. We've got these uh, Kinfen ones, but these aren't, well, they're not axial. These are radial, aren't they, with the two leads coming out of one end. Um, $45.99, again, 2.7 volt, 3,000 farads, and so on and so forth. There are some slightly different... Uh, version boards, these ones with the sort of chamfered off ends, um, but again, they're, they're designated as uh, being for 3000 farad uh, capacitors. So, um, yeah, that's rather expensive if they only send you one. Um, it's quite expensive even for if they'd sent two. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do, if anything, with 3000 farad capacitors just yet. And I mean, even if I buy two, that's sort of getting on for $100. And that'll only give me 5.4 volts. I'm not entirely sure how far I'm going to pursue this. Right, next up is this one. It says screen protectors. I don't know anyone who uses screen protectors now, do you? Is it worth using screen protectors? None of my phones have got, all tablets have got screen protectors on them. Anyway, screen protectors has nothing to do with this. This is a Top K 2.4 amp max round LED nylon magnetic charging cable. Ooh, uh. So what have we got? We have got, well, a charging cable and some sort of tie wrap thing. Um, okay, so this is um, a charging cable that has three magnetically attached end pieces. Um, one I think is Apple Lightning. One is USB type B and the other one is USB uh, type C or USB C. Let's have a closer look at those. Right here they are. Let's get in a little bit um, closer. I have to say the lightning one. Let me just refocus this. Yeah, this one. It's sort of solid metal end, um, but it's got some sort of embedded printed circuit board. You can see the tracks and wires and stuff, and the exposed. Um, we assume gold-plated contacts don't look like they've been implemented very precisely. There are sort of hmm, differences between the um, connector positions, uh, different widths between them. That one's got a sort of sticking out bit. Yeah, that looks a bit disappointing. Now I've got no uh, lightning stuff. All oh, these are magnetic, so they are all attaching to each other. So I'm not too bothered about that. I'm not even sure why I bought a, a three-ended cable, but I kind of was looking at them and some of them had just two ends. This is USB type C. Um, now I'm not sure which of these pins does what on USB type C. Whoops, very close to the camera here. Um, probably power at the ends, but I'd have to look it up. I'm not sure what the uh, relevance of all that middle stuff is. And those two have stuck together. And then this is the USB uh, micro type B which has got a strange, uh, just sort of embossed holding pins there. Not, not the usual type. They don't look as good to me. And uh, five pins in there, of course. All right, let's connect this to a power bank. Let's take this off. Um, because this apparently lights up as well. So let's plug that in. Do I have to switch it on? Yes. Um, so yeah, that lights up. And there's a blue glow. There's lots of blue coming out of the middle of this thing. Now that has 
inside it um, a spring-loaded pin. You probably can't see that with that plugged in. Let's unplug it. But uh, yeah, there's a spring-loaded pin there. So that gets pushed in by whichever end uh, you're using. So let's use the type B. And I suppose one of the um, advantages of this is if it's plugged into your phone and you accidentally yank the cable, that will disconnect and prevent a disaster occurring to the socket inside your device. But uh, yeah, interesting. I wanted an all singing, all dancing cable that kind of did everything. But I must admit, I'm a little underwhelmed by this. Um, right, let's try plugging it into this phone. This is the Doogee Mix. So this has got a USB Type B. Let's see if that plugs in. Hmm, it's not a very convinc. Oh, and of course I've got a job to get that thing back out now. It's not a very convincing fit. Partly, probably because of these um, these little uh, retaining clips. They're not the usual spring-loaded clips. These are just indents in there, and that's not a very convincing fit in there but that magnetic thing does work and if it gets knocked or pulled of course you do have the uh, benefit that um, it shouldn't do any damage to the phone just make sure the charging indicator comes on yep yeah, that seems to be working one thing bothers me a little bit if you slide this to the side you can actually get that blue LED to go off now does it make these lights go off on the power bank no so if I take that off, the blue LED stays on. So sliding it to the side, I'm definitely shorting the output. The power bank doesn't seem to have noticed that. <laughs> so is the cable getting hot when I slide that sideways and short the output through this cable? Oh, that LED has <laughs> gone off permanently now. Why is that? Oh, I think the power bank has switched off its output. Yeah, so you can, if you slide that sideways, short the output because, of course, the pin in the centre there is touching the outside of this. Oh, I'm not as pleased with this as I thought I was going to be. So this is the item here. It's uh, the Top K 1 meter round LED magnetic type C micro USB or lightning charge cable for cell phone. Um, there are different colours, actually. Uh, what have we got? Black, oh, red, gold, grey and lots of different types. Um, I think you can get either three plugs or just a single plug of the type you want. If you go for the three plugs, uh, the item is $8.90. That's a lot. Why did I pay $8.90 for that? I got buyer's remorse on this one. I really wish I hadn't bought it. Uh, free shipping and this one came from Power Seller 2009 DHM. Right, now I need something to cheer myself up, so um, this should do it. Yeah, this should cheer me up. Uh, hmm. It's a USB LED light bar, and I think this one's quite an interesting one. 5-volt uh, powered surface mount device LED. Uh, what have we got? Safety, energy saving, environmental protection. What's that? Height intensity. High intensity, I think that's supposed to mean. And something about decay, but I can't quite read it. Uh, right, this one is 1 amp. It's also 350 um, millimeters. It's 5 watt. It's 3000K, 4000K and 6000K all at the same time. I think we need to open it up. Uh, right, that just fell out the end, so we got some uh, self-adhesive, double-sided sticky pads, it looks like. And some very interesting... Oh, they're magnetic. Are they magnetic? No, they're not magnetic. Um, some sort of screw end cap type thing. Is this going to come out? It wouldn't come out the other end. Will it come out this end? It did all get a bit bent, didn't it, in transit? Is it in one piece? Yes, now that's the interesting thing. It's got two switches on here. That... <laughs> it got a bit mangled, didn't it, in the post? Oh dear. Yeah, so that got well and truly uh, bent in the post. Can I bend it back ever so slightly? Possibly, but I risk damaging it. Um, I suppose we can take the um, this protection thing off. 
that protected it really well didn't it while it was in transit question is does it still work right so it's 5 volt USB so I can plug it into this power bank let's switch that on and now we have one switch for those LEDs and one switch for those LEDs cold white and warm white and if I set the exposure right uh, hmm, how am I going to do that ah okay yes you can see there that we've got the uh, cold white LEDs you can see the spacing of them and the warm white LEDs are presumably interspersed with the cold white can you see both together yeah you can just about make out both together there but yeah you've got separate switches for uh, warm white and cool white or you can have a mix of the two that's why I bought this that's why I like the look of it it still works despite the fact that it's bent in the middle now I'm not planning to take this apart uh, right now but you can just see down into the end of that tube there um, and see the LEDs you can see some um, gold plated pads there but yeah there are the LEDs I can't quite make out oh yes I think I can just about see um, that the first one is a cool white and the next one down is a warm white but if I switch this on it totally bleaches out the uh, image on the camera so we can't see them lighting up and I think I can just about make out um, some resistors there as well is that one resistor per pair of LEDs there's some black colored item on the left there I can't quite work out what that is oh yeah these little screw um, things they are magnetic you can see it's got a little magnet embedded in the end there and it uh, clicks onto that yeah I think I see how that's meant to work you use the double-sided sticky pad on your surface and then you stick this metal disc to that sticky pad and then the magnet will adhere to that metal disc there must be two metal discs in there yeah there are they're very very thin uh, so yeah nice light I do like it uh, the switch is enormous and mains rated if you read the back it says uh, 250 volts it's a very big uh, uh, switch for controlling the two uh, light colors I like it but of course you do run the risk of this sort of long thin item uh, getting damaged in transit uh, it's not really the seller's fault is it you know if I'm going to buy items this long and this thin well that's the risk I take and so this item is a portable USB LED bar lights rigid strip night DC 5 volt 60 LEDs 10 watt desk lamp switch doesn't say anything there about the uh, two colors but you can see that in the image below here you've got the uh, cool white both on together and the warm white uh, this was Canadian $7.17 which is approximately five US dollars 59 free shipping and this came from TGS buys and so these are today's post bag items now I've just noticed on this one um, that there are a couple of little solder point pads which I can get to for the 5.4 volts the zero volts and of course there's this pad for the sort of midpoint so I could solder some of my small 10 farad capacitors across these points, um, power this up, charge those capacitors, watch these little protection circuit LEDs come on. Yeah, that one could be quite fun. Um, so once again, I would just like to say a big thanks to uh, Patreon supporters who make these post bag videos possible. Um, if you would like to become a Patreon supporter, then click this link here another couple of videos up here if you want to watch more of my stuff and if you want to subscribe to this channel then click this link here cheerio